Everyone, including me, has been talking about macOS 26 or macOS Tahoe. But here is the truth. After using it for weeks, I actually went back to macOS 15. And then it's actually shocking how much smoother and faster macOS 15 feels. Most of you guys know the process to downgrade a Mac is quite annoying and I was quite skeptical about downgrading but I still went through the literal hell anyway. But then after I landed back at macOS 15 and I used it for like an hour, I was now wondering why did I wait so long to do this? The truth is that I upgraded my main partition to macOS 26 the moment it dropped mainly so I could do a review video for you guys about it. I actually expected some performance gains since Apple upgraded Metal to Metal 4 on macOS 26 compared to Metal 3 on macOS 15, right? But then after using it to handle my workflow as a boring content creator, I started noticing some annoying differences. I know you might be thinking, is it battery life? No. Battery life on the MacBook Air which I currently use is always good regardless of how buggy the OS is. Of course, as long as your battery is in good condition. I will say that coincidentally or not, macOS 26 still drops my battery health by 1% and then I use coconut battery to check the actual accurate battery percentage but then it kept reducing over time, yeah. It was going down by like percentage by percentage from time to time even if it wasn't changing in settings. But then here is the crazy part, back then I didn't even know I was going to make a video about this particular topic. After downgrading to Mac OS 15, I started to check coconut battery from time to time out of curiosity and then my health started going up. It was around 91 at that time but now it's around 96 and also the battery health hasn't dropped for almost two weeks since the upgrade in my settings app. So that tells us obviously that Mac OS 26 has accelerated battery degrading as a factor. You know what, I won't want to just make assumptions like that, I'll leave it for you guys to judge. What I will judge myself is RAM management <laughs> and overall performance. You see, that's the thing about using a base model, you can actually tell when a software is well optimized because ProMotion on the Pro will not make up for laggy UI and also extra RAM will not make up for poor RAM management. The fact is almost everything system based, UI based or macOS Tahoe took a lot more effort than normal to run. It felt like the laptop was pulling a heavy weight and you could tell because Apple Silicon is incredibly powerful and exceptional. You see I'm talking about basic system operations like opening the finder, dragging one folder to another, launching apps, you know, stuff like that. And every single one of those was so much laggy and it, it just felt like, you know, it was something heavy for the Mac to do, but it feels effortless, like a snap of fingers on Mac OS 15. Trust me, like if you use them both side by side, the difference is very clear. The thing now is that I use the base M2 MacBook Air and I feels like the slower SSD would have been the cause of that because I just got this before upgrading the same day. I didn't even take my time to test Mac OS 16 beforehand. But then after I downgraded back to Mac OS 16, the slow SSD was not even a factor anymore. Everything was as fast as I expect an Apple Silicon Mac to be. That tells you that Mac OS Tahoe is the problem of course. There is one funny one, like the funniest part is the new spotlight is so slow, like when you type in something, instantly you get a suggestion on the same macOS 15, right? But macOS 26, like, it takes maybe three times the time it takes, or maybe four times if you're unlucky to get that same suggestion. Yeah, that's a fact that I experienced on the base M2 MacBook Air. Even that whole apps transition from like being in the launch pad to having its own apps, Windows 11 looking kind of window, it just doesn't sit right with me yeah. and many people including most of you watching it yeah honestly we need like a third party app i'm reviewing one actually or i'm going to work on one a third party app that could make us get a better kind of like launch pad not that ridiculous thing apple gave us on mac os Tahoe. and then those of you that use third party apps like bartender or all these apps that either make your menu bar behave a certain way Basically just customizing your menu bar, right? You would see many bugs on Mac OS Tahoe, yeah. It would take at least maybe two months before those apps begin to work 
in a perfectly stable way. But on macOS 15, of course, everything has been optimized because of like all the time that's passed since its launch. Animations actually felt weird as well, especially like launching of apps and launching the mission control as well. Nothing broke, of course, but after downgrading to macOS 15, it felt a lot more smoother. Like, more smoother is not even a word, but I have to use it in this situation. The fact is, macOS 26 gives me that beta, beta vibe. It doesn't feel like a stable version at all. Yeah, it's not even close. And then why it's very ridiculous is that on iOS and iPadOS, the liquid glass interface is interactive. You know, it's more difficult to handle and code by Apple because you actually like interact physically with it. So it has to respond to all your human interactions. But then we are just using a mouse and a cursor to interact with our macOS liquid glass. So I feel like that should be a lot easier for Apple to implement, right? But then in my experience, Mac OS Tahoe is the buggiest right now among all the OS's that like Apple has dropped for all their platforms. All in all, Mac OS 26 is not bad, it looks clean, don't get me wrong. But on my MacBook Air, the older Mac OS 15 still gives me the best mix and best compromise between performance, battery life, UI smoothness and every other thing I need for my YouTube workflow. Sometimes newer does not mean better. So I'll tell you with certainty, if you are still on macOS 15, do not feel like you are missing out on anything and do not rush to upgrade. And if you have been using macOS 26, how has the experience been for you?